Okay, hello everyone. Today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023. The Lord began speaking to me, was it last night? At least last night, if not earlier, about how he wants me to do a teaching about how to know when it's time to leave an assembly, otherwise known as um, a church, a gathering, a small group, a Bible study, any kind of church gathering. He told me to use the word assembly. So I've got my notes. I've got my scripture up on the screen, ready to go. Let's open in prayer. <sighs> Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Once again, Lord, I plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth over my entire domain in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that's not true, anything not coming from you, and anything you do not want me to say, Lord. I ask you, Yeshua, will you please breathe into me afresh, overflowing your Holy Spirit and your peace that surpasses all comprehensions, emotions, moods, and circumstances. I ask, will you please just fill me up afresh, Lord, with your presence and your words. I ask, Lord, that this recording would be... Um, your words instead of my own. I ask you, Holy Spirit, right now in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth to the, bring to the forefront of my remembrance, Lord, any other scripture, um, examples that I can give that I have um, either experienced and or witnessed. Um, please lead me where you want me to go, Lord, and keep me away from where you don't want me to go. I ask for this in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Okay. Amen. Um, so, the title he told me to put is Wells Without Water. When is it time to leave an assembly? Okay, Wells Without Water is referencing 2 Peter 2.17. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. It's very similar to a verse in the book of Jude, actually. Another foundational scripture for this teaching is 1 Corinthians 5.12. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? Okay, so the next time you hear somebody regurgitating, you know, judge not lest you be judged, you can give them 1 Corinthians 5.12. Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? To judge and also what's coming to mind right now is uh, Malachi where it says that we are to judge between the wicked and the righteous those who are serving God and those who are not okay so the Lord gave me five bullet points or talking points five things to look for okay when you are trying to evaluate and make an assessment as to whether or not the Lord is leading you out of an assembly and again assembly is just any circle of people any gathering okay this could be yes a brick and mortar institutionalized church I think this especially applies to that but it really could be any gathering any small group any Bible study whatever they call themselves okay any group of people that is coming together um, supposedly in the name of the Lord or really in the name of in the name of of the Lord uh, whether or not they're doing what they're supposed to be doing is another question and that's what we're gonna get into okay so number one the Lord says look for hubris hubris okay this is um, excessive self-confidence it's very akin to pride okay being puffed up and the Lord was actually um, telling me that there is an evil spirit of hubris okay um, for this, he gave me Proverbs 16, 18. I think we all know this one. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And what the Lord is saying here, and uh, hopefully I will remember to kind of keep circling back to this and re-emphasizing, but there are, especially regarding the brick and mortar institutionalized churches, there are churches that the Lord has Ichabod'd. He has left, okay? And he has divorced himself from them 
uh, for various reasons, some of which we're going to go over right now. Um, and destruction is to befall those churches, okay? It is the Lord's will for those churches, those assemblies to die out, okay? He gave me three sub points under this topic of hubris, okay? He says to look for it in the leadership. He says to look for it in just the overall assembly, just in general, the people that are there. And he says even in the children, look for it even in the children, because hubris could definitely be a principality that has taken over that assembly, okay? Moving on, number two. The Lord says, lack of exhortation to repent. Okay, what immediately comes to my mind is John the Baptist, right? Um, the, the scriptures the Lord gave me here, Luke 13, 3. This is Yeshua speaking. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Yeshua is our example. He is the one that we are to emulate, okay? And even he told us that he only did, he only spoke and, and acted as, as the Father told him to, right? And so we are to follow him, right? Pick up our cross and follow him. If the assembly is not exhort, let me pronounce this correctly, exhorting you or the people in general to repent, that is a major, major red flag, okay? There's also Luke 13, 5, only two verses later. Yeshua repeats himself again. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. This is so imperative. Repentance is required to get into heaven, okay? And if this is not being preached... This, if, if this foundational truth, this foundational doctrine is not being preached, that is a flashing neon red flag to get out of that assembly, okay? Then we have Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So again, Yeshua himself preached repentance because it is just foundational, it is a criteria, it is a requirement, it is a prerequisite, it is mandatory, whatever word you want to use, you need it to get into heaven. If you do not repent, you cannot get into heaven, okay? Moving on. Point number three, the Lord says, are you being fed? Are you being fed? He gave me Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Again, I don't like the English language using the word understanding. I would rather say comprehension, but that's the gist of it, okay? He gave me three sub points for this. Letter A, or number one, are you convicted of your sin, okay? And, you know, it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to convict people of their sin. I was, it's funny how, how the Lord was preparing me to, to do this because I was just out running errands and on the Christian radio, they were doing a sermon teaching on the book of Acts and how, um, and of course they, they referenced other scriptures, but they were talking about how Yeshua told us that the Holy Spirit would convict us of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. And the very first thing there is sin, okay? That is the responsibility, that is the job of the Holy Spirit. First and foremost is to convict you of your sin. And so if you are attending any assembly and you're walking away not feeling convicted of your sin, now I'm not saying it has to be every time you go, but if, if, if there's never any conviction, if you're not feeling any conviction whatsoever, that means that there is an absence of the Holy Spirit. And you don't want to be bothering, wasting your time and energy with an assembly that doesn't have the Holy Spirit, okay? Number two, or letter B, are you satisfied with what is preached? Now, this could be taken different ways according to, you know, how, per how each person wants to interpret that. But um, this is not about your flesh being satisfied, obviously, but is your spirit satisfied? So, you know, circling back to 
the topic that we're on here, point number three, are you being fed? Are you satisfied with what is being preached, okay? If, if you just know already that you're fed up with how they're preaching this or not preaching that or whatever, um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's not about your flesh, but it's, but it's your spirit, let that lead you. That's the Holy Spirit giving you a check in your spirit. Le let that lead you, okay? Um, and then the third sub point to this is, are you being discipled? And it's funny because as I was just preparing just now, I read that to myself and I read disciplined and then Holy Spirit and I had a chuckle because being disciplined is part of being discipled, okay? Being discipled, it includes so many things. It includes being taught, yes. It includes going, you know, being fed milk and then being fed meat. It includes being held accountable. It includes being admonished, okay? It includes being encouraged and, and exhorted and, you know, all, all these things. But being a disciple and being discipled is about learning how to pick up your cross and follow the Lord. It's learning how to walk with the Lord. It's learning how to have an intimate relationship with the Lord, okay? It's learning how to walk in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. If no one is discipling you, now this can happen on a one-on-one -on -one basis where you have someone kind of acting as like a spiritual mother or father mentoring you, or it can just be kind of more of a group thing, okay? It doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. But if you are not experiencing any level of discipleship, um, this could be very much be an indicator that you're not going to grow there, you're not growing, that group isn't growing, that group is not in alignment with God, and so you need to go somewhere else where you will be discipled. Now, I will say that this sermon, this teaching, is more so for, um, it's more so for the inner court Christians, the carnal Christians, the people who haven't been conveyed into the kingdom yet, who aren't in the Holy of Holies yet, who aren't part of the 144,000 yet, but it still could apply to those who are in the Holy of Holies 144,000, okay? Because we never stop growing or maturing, right? Um, there is a, a possibility, depending on who you are and where you're at with God, that, you know, if you're not being... I'm stuttering. If you're not being discipled, it could be because you've grown and matured so much to the point that now Yeshua himself, the Holy Spirit himself, is going to be the one who's going to be directly leading you, teaching you, etc. Okay? Um, and yes, that goes to a certain extent across the board. We're all supposed to have that direct relationship, but in an assembly, there should be discipleship happening. Okay? And a lot of people who are babes in Christ often have a pride issue and they don't want to humble themselves and accept that they are a babe in Christ and that in itself can be a stumbling block. So you really need to check with the Lord on this, okay? Um, but bottom line, point number three, the Lord says, are you being fed? Again, Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, his heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding, okay? Um, and that's something else to really look at is the heart of the pastor, the heart of the leader, the heart of the leadership. Look at their character. Look at their motives. Okay. Ask the Lord to reveal to you um, their motives. Okay. Yeshua told us that out of the abundance of the heart overflows the mouth. If you ask the Lord in his name, people forget that. Okay. He told us that if we ask him anything in his name, it will be ours unless we ask amiss, which I'm, I'm going to be quoting that in verse, in point number four, um, people forget to ask in his name. But if you ask him in his name to reveal someone's heart to you, to reveal their character to you, to reveal their motives to you, he will, Holy Spirit will. It'll be supernatural because all of a sudden that person will just, they'll just say stuff and it'll be laid out for you on a, on a silver platter, okay? All right, number four, the Lord says, look for monetary greed. Now, again, this could be something that could be misinterpreted or miscomprehended, okay? Just because someone does a sermon preaching about tithing or giving or whatever, that doesn't mean it's monetary greed. Just because someone delivers a rhema word from the Lord about tithing or giving or whatever doesn't mean that they have monetary greed, okay? Um, you have to look at 
a bunch of different factors over a long period of time to see if there's really monetary greed happening there, okay? Um, so he gave me three bullet points, sub, sub points for this. Uh, letter A, are they pushing people to join or become a member? Okay, this is more so for the brick and mortar institutionalized churches, but even on YouTube, okay, in the Christian community on YouTube, there are people that, you know, um, have this join button up and they, they want you to join their channel and that costs money and, you know, supposedly you'll get all this, this inside secret stuff that everybody else doesn't get, okay? Um, hmm. Lord, do you want me to get into that, that example? Mm, okay, never mind. Um, this is, okay, let, let's go back to scripture. Let's take a look at Yeshua and his disciples, right, who then were known as apostles, okay, when they did their ministry. We don't see anywhere in scripture that they charged people any money or that they you know, however you want to put it, that they required any money to join or become a member, okay? You become a member of the body of Christ by being born again and consecrating yourself, which again means making him Lord, repenting of your sins and your idols, and pursuing the restoration that he came to offer, okay? That's how you become a member. That's how you join the body of Christ. There's no money involved in that. Um, Per se, okay. Now Hebrews seven five does tell us that the sons of Levi, okay, the fivefold officers, are to receive tithes from their brethren. And so, depending on where you're at in the kingdom, if you're an officer, then you're to receive tithes. If you're not an officer, then you're to be giving tithes. Okay, that is the only thing that is required, so to speak. But this this membership nonsense and joining and all this, that is not of God. Okay. Uh, sub point B, are they constantly preaching about financial giving? Now, no, notice the word constantly, constantly, okay? So, again, you have to look at this. Just because someone does a sermon or gives a rhema word that has to do with giving financially, it doesn't mean that they are greedy, okay? But if, they, if, they, if, if it's a theme that is just constantly all the time, that could be a red flag. Letter C, are they wasting money on unnecessary expenses? Are they wasting money on unnecessary expenses? Um, what comes to mind is when I lived in Colorado, for example, um, I went to visit this church and a lot, you know, don't be deceived just because and just because an assembly may be transparent about their finances, about you know how much they're paying each person in leadership, how much they're spending on this and spending on that, people think that, oh, well, if they're being transparent, that must be, um, they must be in alignment with God's will. Not necessarily, just because they're being transparent doesn't mean that, okay? But anyway, I went to visit this one church in Colorado, and they were like, Is it boasting, Lord? Yeah, it, it was boasting and bragging. They spent all this money, I'm sure thousands of dollars, to send this group of people over to, where was it? Was it the country of India? It might have been the country of India, I think. To put them in a boat in the water right next to like where there was a bunch of idols or something in that country or something or other, and they were singing worship songs in this boat right next to where people were having idols and whatever in the country of India. And right there, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, that was a waste of money. That was not my will. And I've prayed on that since then. I, and it's, it's been years now, but I even prayed on it again before I hit record and I said Lord was that your will for them to do that and God said no it wasn't that was a complete waste of my people's money that they tithed into that church okay so pay attention to things like that you know this church was all boasting and bragging of oh look we were shifting the spiritual atmosphere by worshiping in the boat next to the country next to the idols and the Lord said that was a waste 
That, that was just a waste. So look for things like that. Are they wasting money on unnecessary expenses? You know, there's people starving in the world. There's people that are homeless, you know, and oh, don't get me started. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. That was something that the Lord showed me long before I became homeless when I was living in Colorado. Back in 2017, when I was right on the, when I was constantly on the brink of becoming homeless for at least a year, if not more, um, I searched around in Colorado for not only a quote unquote home church, which I just couldn't find, but I also searched around and inquired around to see, okay, which of these churches, if any, have a ministry to minister to the poor, to the homeless, to those in need, to those in crisis, etc. I couldn't find any. I couldn't find any. Of all the churches that I've known in my life, I've only known one church, and it was uh, Shore Vineyard when I was in New Jersey. They had a little ministry where they, now granted they had their own way of vetting people and, and whatever, but they took in a small amount of people and would give them shelter and and so forth and whatever and would kind of like try to rehabilitate them to get them back on their own feet and da, 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 you know and I see no churches doing it okay that is a worthy cause you know so these are things to test the spirit ask the Lord about okay so again point number four monetary greed are they pushing people to join or become a member are they constantly preaching about financial giving are they wasting money on unnecessary expenses and the scripture the Lord gave me for this is James 4, 3. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures, okay? So after a while, both with an individual person and with an assembly, if the Lord sees that you are not stewarding the financial, well, shall I say the finances, if, if that individual or that assembly is not stewarding the finances correctly, if they are not seeking the Lord about how to steward those finances, do not be surprised if the Lord all of a sudden starts drying up their finances. If the Lord, um, now I'm not saying that, that God's gonna bankrupt anybody necessarily because um, in, in my observation and experience, you know, if you're, if you're in alignment in other areas, you know, um, but maybe you're just off in one area or two areas or something like that, the Lord is gracious and still our provider and he'll provide like just enough for you to get by. But don't be surprised if whatever abundance you may have had at one point dries up because you're not humbling yourself, because you're not seeking him, because you're not coming into alignment, because you're not stewarding how you're supposed to be stewarding, okay? And this applies again, not just to individuals, but to an assembly, okay? And then number five, unbiblical doctrine. Now again, this is this boils down to interpretation okay um, a lot of people think and believe that they know what sound doctrine is they regurgitate what other people say they're led by their own intellect some people are even led by their flesh okay um, and so of course this is subjective um, but there is just there's certain things that really are black and white in the Bible, and God told me not to get into any examples or get into this because I think at some point he's going to have me do like a separate video on, for example, like speaking in tongues and, you know, what are the do's and don't, don'ts of that in, an, in, in, in a corporate environment or atmosphere. You know, but there's just certain things that are laid out for us that I have witnessed and experienced that, the, that assemblies are just not even following. They're not enforcing. They're not holding anyone accountable. And if you dare say anything, you know, you know, you're being divisive and blah 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 blah. Okay, um, so you have to just pay attention to this stuff and pay attention to whether you feel the Lord's peace. All right? He says, "My peace I give to you, not as the world gives." Okay, so again, we are body, soul, spirit. We're not talking about peace on a soul level. We're talking about peace on a spirit level. Okay, if you don't feel Yeshua's peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, circumstances, okay, all understanding, okay. Um, if you don't feel that underlying peace from him, that's called a check in your spirit. If you're getting a check in your spirit, that is to, yes, what I'm hearing Holy Spirit say is there will be a voice behind you telling you this is the way, walk in it, right? Um, do not look to the right or to the left, right? So, if the Lord's giving you a check in your spirit, 
you pause, you stop dead in your tracks and you say, okay, Lord, give me clarity. Will you please give me clarity? Ask for clarity in his name and say, okay, Lord, what exactly are you giving me a check in my spirit about? Can you, you know, not can you, but will you please pinpoint it for me? Give me clarity so that I know exactly what you're displeased with and what is it that you want me to do? What action, okay? Um, I am very much a Peter myself. I'm all about action. So the Lord will speak something to me or give me a nudge or give me a check in my spirit. And that's then it's my responsibility to, to bring it back to him and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying exactly? Number one, give me clarity. Um, and number two, what is the action that I'm to take here? What is the action? Is there an action you want me to take? And if so, what is it, okay? Um, but yeah, I was having a conversation with someone a few days ago and they were asking me exactly this, like, how do you know when the Lord is leading you to make an exodus, to exit? And, you know, it's been pretty established that the Lord has been leading a mass exodus out of the institutionalized churches for years now, okay? A lot of these institutionalized churches are in bed with Satan. They are in bed with the beast system, okay? Uh, if they are tax exempt, the whole 501c3 or whatever here in the USA, okay, that's not of God, okay? Um, this may be a little off topic, but what's, what's popping in my head right now is, you know, this concept of retiring, even that, I, that's, unbib that's unbiblical, you know, um, nowhere in scripture does it say anything about oh once you hit 65 you retire and you stop working you know it, it that, that that's a beast system thing you know um and there's doctrines like that that have just infiltrated into the institutionalized churches um i don't know why i brought that up but that just popped in my head um God does not want us to be tracked by the government, tracked by the beast system. God is leading a mass exodus out of the beast system. Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon, okay? Um, and, you know, it's funny. A couple nights ago, was it last night? It might have been last night. Um, <coughs> the Lord was speaking to me <coughs> about even the officers. And he was saying to me, how there's so few officers left because people have been Ichabodding themselves through various means, whether it's by taking the mark, whether it's, you know, by being disobedient and, you know, being fearful, being prideful, not coming into alignment, et cetera, et cetera. And he even had me contend for the officers because there's just so far and few between left that are in any, any amount of substantial right standing with him. Um, Lord, where was I? Where were we going with this, Lord? Holy Spirit, will you please give me clarity right now and get me back on track? Where were we going with this, God? Um, the B system. Father God, Yahweh, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please evict any and all evil spirits of disorientation or confusion that are in my domain right now, please, God. Amen. Holy Spirit, where were we going? The officers, the beast system. What, what were you leading me to say, Lord? Come out of Babylon. I apologize, hold on. Um, come out of here, my people. You don't want us being tracked. Come out of the beast system. Oh, right, officers, right. So um, there are people that you may not even realize that you are an officer, but you've been ordained as an officer since you were conceived in your mother's womb. Um, and the Lord may not reveal that to you until he really needs you in his kingdom because um, maybe you weren't coming into alignment, maybe you weren't consecrating yourself, but, but, but because other officers keep getting themselves Ichabodded, now it's time for the divine replacements, okay? Um, because God knows everything. He knows what, what's going to happen ahead of time. And so um, it's not that someone becomes an officer. You were always ordained for it. It's just a matter of whether or not God's going to reveal it to you, anoint you, appoint you, you know, launch you, activate you, empower you, okay? 
Um, and so there's a lot of people that he has been leading out of the uh, beast system. Um, and you have to just pick up your cross and follow him directly without anyone mentoring you, unfortunately. Now, of course, the Lord is going to try to provide you with whatever midwife, whatever spiritual mother or father, midwife, mentor, um, when possible. But it's really slim pickings these days. It's few and far between the people that are actually available, the people that are actually in alignment and consecrated. Um, and so a lot of us are just having to just follow him directly, completely, without anyone, without any human being being involved whatsoever, okay? Um, and so, uh, you know, depending on who you are, you know, uh, that may be where you're at. The Lord may be trying to t tell you, hey, I'm calling you into ministry, you know? Um, so anyway, if, if you have any uh, questions, you're welcome to reach out in the comments or, or email. I will put my email in the description box below. I usually put it in the description boxes of my teaching videos. Um, you know, um, I can pray on your behalf and see if the Lord will give me any information regarding you and, and your path and whatever. Um, but anyway, this is just a teaching that, that he wanted me to do, to just to give some guidance and to draw attention because he is... Um, mm, yes, Lord, yes. He is drawing people out of the institutionalized churches uh, in particular. There was a lady in 2020, I don't remember her name, uh, but she had a dream that she shared about how um, basically the evil elite uh, showed up at this church with guillotines, you know, and so um, you really need to be seeking God as to whether he wants you in an assembly at all, and if he does, which one, and, and so forth, okay? Um, because going back to the title of this teaching, a lot of these assemblies are wells without water, okay? They, meaning the living water of God, the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, he has left a lot of these assemblies, okay? Um, Lord, is there anything else you want me to say? No, I'm seeing the end, okay. Um, so as always, check the description boxes of my videos. I will put all these notes in there for your reference. Um, and, uh, and if the Lord does give me anything else, I'll put it in there. But I'll put these notes in the scripture in the description box below, along with my email address. And you are welcome to contact me. Uh, if you're led to by the Holy Spirit of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, please do go ahead and share this video, this channel, this ministry on your social media platforms, etc., so that I can reach more people, so that God can reach more people through me. Uh, I bless you all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth.